So I'm going to talk you through some middle or mesoscale winds, otherwise known as local winds. And in each of these cases, look for the high and low pressure. So just to emphasize, look for somewhere where there was a high pressure, lots of gas particles, and a low pressure, sparser gas particles. And then we know that the air will locate from the high to the low pressure creating what we call wind, okay? So look for that. The other thing, and so each one of these are, in some cases, they are a pair of winds. For instance, um, we have a land breeze and we have a sea breeze, and one occurs during the day and one occurs at night. Um, one of the things, a hint I'll give you, is that, for instance, land breezes come from the land towards the sea, and sea breezes come from the sea towards the land. Mountain breezes come from the mountain towards the valley. Valley breezes come from the valley towards the mountain, etc. So um, these so these pairs of winds go together. These pairs of winds go together. Then I kind of have an assortment of winds down here. These are local or small, excuse me, middle scale winds. Um, so kind of, uh, um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Oh, I guess the other thing is that in all cases, I think it's striking that um, there's a special scenario set up for each of these local winds to occur. So we're going to start with the local wind or pairs of winds called the sea breeze and the land breeze. And back actually in chapter 6, um, I talked about this. We talked about the fact that wind is air basically locating, relocating from a high to a low pressure. And we said, I remember we, I talked about an example of Chicago. Chicago has something called a lake breeze. And about 3 p.m. Um, in Chicago, you get basically um, off of Lake Michigan. Here's my Lake Michigan, and here's my skyscraper. Oops, sorry. Um, you get a lake breeze. And now look for the high and the low pressure. And um, basically what... what, um, what uh, land and land and sea breezes have to do with is the fact that large bodies of water like Michigan, like Lake Michigan or the ocean or I guess a sea, um, large bodies of water, water in general is slow to um, in this case heat up and it's also slow to cool down and land over here, there's my skyscraper, um, is quick to quick to heat up during the daytime and quick to uh, cool down during the nighttime. So let's look at some figures on the next slide. So for those of you who have printed out my PowerPoint slides and are kind of filling in blanks, I'll give you a minute to fill in, fill in these blanks. But here are a pair of local winds, the sea and land breeze, and let's take a look a little bit closer at the figures, starting with the sea breeze. So this would be like um, the the lake, uh, what did I say? Chicago has the lake breeze. Um, so this happens about, oh, I'll go ahead and say about 3 p.m. And what's happened is during the, remember that's about the hottest time of the day. And so what's happened is the water, oh, let's start here. What's happened is about that, you know, with all that solar energy, the land has heated up quickly. Okay, quick to heat up, so what happens then is, remember, warm air in general is kind of sparse particles, and we have a kind of a, we have a low pressure here over land. Well, now the water is kind of stubborn to heat up, so relatively speaking, it is cool, and cool air is more tightly packed. So we have a high pressure here. So then at the Earth's surface, basically, you have your high, you have your low, and we have a sea, um, or a lake breeze, sea breeze or lake breeze, ocean breeze, okay. Um, so let's look now, let's see if I can, let's look what happens uh, when things cool off. So um, as temperatures cool down, we have now the fact that water, it's, it's uh, stubborn to heat up and it's stubborn to cool down. So even though it's nighttime and uh, surface temperatures are cooling, um, the water will retain its heat, so it's generally warm, which is a low pressure. And here, land tends to cool more quickly. 
Again, it heats up quickly and it cools quickly. So it's relatively cool compared to that large body of water. And so what cooler temperatures bring are a high pressure. So now here we have an outgoing breeze. Okay, so this would be our land breeze. So talk about another pair of um, another pair of local winds. We have a valley breeze and a mountain breeze. So um, remember that a valley breeze is coming from the valley up the mountain, and a mountain breeze is coming from the mountain down to the valley. So um, I've got some good figures coming up, but just to kind of show you, here's my mountain, here's my valley. Here's my other mountain, okay? So if we kind of start here, um, during the daytime, what's going to happen? You, well, one of the things we know is, is as you climb a mountain, air gets thinner. And kind of related to that fact is how I think of it. Um, the air is pretty sparse up here, and so it means it's more susceptible. It heats up more quickly, and it cools down more quickly. So... Um, if it heats up more quickly, then in the heat of the day, basically, we have warm temperatures up here, up the mountain, and because they're warm, um, it brings a low pressure, okay? And so we have a low pressure up the sides of our mountain, okay? And we have, generally speaking, um, uh, uh, cooler temperatures down here, so we have a high pressure down here. And so can you see where in the hot of the day what we just what we generally have is we have a breeze going up the mountain from the valley. That's why it is a valley breeze in the heat of the day. Um, and let me go ahead and I'm going to leave the next scenario and show you we have just the opposite thing. Well, I'll go ahead and show you down here. It was so fun. Okay, let me draw my little mountain again. Here's my valley. It's a pretty steep mountain. There's my mountain, okay? Um, now, when temperatures cool off, okay, these, this uh, relatively um, sparse air, the thin air up here will cool off more quickly. So the cold air, we know, tends to be relatively high pressure. So relatively high pressure. And down here in the valley, um, the thicker air will... Um, retain its heat so it, uh, warm air generally has kind of a low pressure so that's why when things cool down we have kind of a downslope um, movement of air a downslope wind we call the mountain breeze okay so so I'll let you kind of fill in the blanks kind of soak in the text that's up here but um, here this is during the daytime and remember we have our um, valley breeze going kind of an upslope breeze and here at nighttime when temperatures cool cool down we have a mountain breeze a breeze going down the mountain towards the valley so a few things um, this upslope wind this valley breeze actually can be a lifting mechanism to create some kind of pretty cumulus clouds we see here um, one thing that happens at night and um, is we can actually create what we call a temperature inversion. And temperature inversions are, no, are uh, what give us our notorious um, temperature inversions in the valleys. Pinned, cold air is pinned down in the valley. And this is how this works. Basically, we have, remember we have um, a high pressure from that cold air um, as the temperatures cool down and, and that that sinking air is going to bring cold temperatures down here so you have a pool of cold temperatures and then basically what if you have precipitating precipitation falling you have a pocket of cold air down here if you have falling precipitation and let's say it melts somewhere in here it can go ahead and refreeze here it's a temperature inversion so this pair of winds the Chinook wind and the Phone wind um, actually um, are the same type of wind, and they have to do with mountains. The next two types of local winds I'm going to talk about have to do with mountains. And specifically, the Chinook winds are... The Chinook winds actually have to do with the Rocky Mountains. So picture the Rocky Mountains in North America, and you have to picture the leeward side. And one of the things we're going to learn later in Chapter 7 is that if this is the Rockies, I'll put an R for Rockies, uh, one of the things is that we are under the influence of the mid-latitude westerly winds. So we have a preva prevailing wind that comes from the west. You may have already known that. 
So the windward side of the Rockies is over here, and the leeward side of the Rockies is over here. So that's the side of the Rockies we're talking about, the east side of the Rockies. And so what happens with the Chinook winds is basically you have a high pressure, I'll put an H up here, high pressure um, near the top of the mountains, and so kind of all at once it, it sends air down, actually down the Rocky Mountains. And one of the things about descending air is that as it descends, it gets smaller and smaller. The air becomes compressed. And we talked about how air will cool when it expands. And as it uh, compresses or gets smaller, it will warm. So one of the things that's characteristic about um, the Chinook winds, and actually the phone winds are the same thing as the Chinook winds, except they have to do with not the Rockies but the Alps, is that they go very fast and they are a warm wind. And actually the term Chinook is a word, it's an uh, Indian word for snow eater. And that has to do with the fact that they are very warm um, winds. So this next local wind um, following the Chinook winds is actually the Santa Ana winds. And they too have to do with the Rockies. But they are on the windward side of the Rockies. They're on the western slopes, generally speaking. So, but a very similar sort of deal. In fact, let me go ahead and show you. Here is a surface map. Um, and in this general vicinity, right here, see that high? Okay, that would be on the western side of the Rockies. And so basically that is what initiates a down wind, again, down the slopes of now the Rockies on the other side. And we call this the Santa Ana winds. And um, the Santa Ana winds are notorious for occurring in the, the Santa Ana winds are uh, notorious for occurring in the fall time and you know uh, all during the summer whether we had precipitation perhaps didn't have precipitation. Um, anyway, my point here is that if we have a wildfire, the Santa Ana winds um, then can really aggravate that problem. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go. All right, so the Katabatic winds don't have to do with mountains. Actually, they have to do with a plateau. So um, uh, two examples of uh, plateaus where you can have these Katabatic winds are the, pla the um, continent of Greenland and Antarctica. Uh, so basically, we have water, and then we have uh, the, the land. It's got kind of a sharp... Um, jets out of the out of the water and then that is a plateau <laughs> looking kind of edge on and so what happens with catabatic winds is you have um, over a period of time you have a built up of kind of a high pressure on the top of a plateau builds up high 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 and then at some point basically it kind of you have this blob of high pressure and it kind of gets on the move and it flows down off the plateau and so it's this movement of air, we call wind, that is this catabatic wind. And it will repeat itself. And the last um, local wind or medium scale wind that I think is maybe even the funnest is called the country breeze. And so remember I said that you know where the breeze is coming from if you look at the name in front of the word breeze. So country breeze is coming from the country. So the opposite of country, I guess, would be city. And actually, that's what it is. So let me go ahead and draw a city here. My skyscrapers, right? Okay. And then around the city is the country. So let me go ahead and a country breeze would look like this. Let me go ahead and just draw some, some wind. And actually, one of the things about country breezes is that um, air is converging there and actually all of that converging air can uh, be problematic for um, kind of uh, smog maybe to kind of build up with those skyscrapers, those cities. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and put an H out here and a low in here because we know that is what causes wind, any sort of wind, any scale of wind, a high, is air moving from a high to a low pressure. So then if we just kind of think through this, one of the things we know about high pressures is high pressures tend to be cooler. I'll just put cold here and let me go ahead and put warm here in the city. Um, so here's the deal. Basically, 
um, what what can what happens and there's something called an urban island heat effect and that was usually I think your textbook refers to it I didn't emphasize it this semester but according to the urban island heat effect what happens is what cities um, how do I say this because there are a lot of concrete and because they uh, tend to not have many plants to help cool things off they tend just tend to be warm and so it's not too hard now to go ahead and kind of think of how our country breeze, breeze operates. So <coughs> there is our country breeze.